Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today I want to talk about cytomel related hair loss uh, and what to do about it if you're experiencing this problem. So we're going to touch in, you know, touch on some of the, the main reasons why this occurs, but I want to give some general information first about cytomel and hair loss. So if you don't know already, cytomel is a name brand thyroid medication which contains T3 only. Um, T3 only thyroid hormone. So it's a thyroid medication and the reason we need to discuss it is because hopefully many of you are on it because I feel like this is probably one of the better thyroid medications available um, in terms of helping reduce the symptoms of hypothyroidism. So it's very effective. Um, and number two, there are some potential side effects associated with this medication which can be which can be alarming to people if they're not expecting them and so what I want to do is just expand on this idea of how cytomel is related to hair loss and why it's probably not um, in the way that you think so just a couple things before we get started number one cytomel is the most or is the strongest thyroid medication available and because of that it should be respected but not feared part of the problem with cytomel is not a lot of doctors like to use it because of this reason Number two, Cytomel is a great thyroid medication and it can be used with other medicines including Synthroid and Levothyroxine. We're only talking about Cytomel today though, so realize Synthroid and Levothyroxine can cause hair loss as well for different reasons, but that's a whole other topic, not something that we're talking about today. Um, but just so you know, there's complexity in the use of those medications as there is with Cytomel. Number three, most people who will use it will not experience hair loss in any way. In fact, the majority of people I think who use it will actually have hair growth. So this is really just for a select subset of the population who are using it. They're feeling really good, but they're still experiencing hair loss, and we're going to talk about why that is. And then the last thing is, all of this information is, applies to Cytomel and Lyothyronine. And so Cytomel is the name brand medication, which is T3 only. Lyothyronine is the gen generic version, which is T3 only as well. All right, so with that out of the way, let's talk about the three reasons how and why Cytomel can cause hair loss. So reason number one uh, is that hair loss is a side effect of the medication itself. So we need to separate the medicine, um, which is the hormone in this case, and the inactive ingredients inside of the medicine. So remember, all medicines, you know, they, they come with more than just the medicine itself. When you consume, a, let's say, a blood pressure medication, you're not just getting 100% of that blood pressure medication. You're getting a whole array of, new, of other different um, binders and fillers and dyes and all these things which are meant to stabilize the real medicine that you're getting. The problem is you can have side effects related to the actual ingredient, the blood pressure medication, or all of the other stuff that I just mentioned that keep it stable and, and change the color and so on and so forth. So you can actually react to two separate components of any medication. And that same is true for Cytomel itself. So Cytomel, we have the, the main thing that we're interested in is the hormone, which is T3, which is triiodothyronine. And then, but in addition to that, it also has a lot of these other inactive binders, fillers, and, and uh, the other name for that is called excipients. And so for whatever reason, I, I don't think it's related to the T3, but I'm not convinced that it's 100% related to the inactive ingredients. For some reason, some individuals um, react with hair loss to the medicine itself, independent of your dose. So just taking the medication at any dose, you'll experience some hair loss. Now the good news is, the majority of this hair loss is temporary and reversible. So I have, a, have a gym image, an image here, sorry, excuse me. Um, which talks about the side effects, and one of them is temporary hair loss, particularly in children during the first months of therapy. Now, I don't think um, that that's always true with children. I think it also applies to adults in my case, but he, let me lay out the problem for you. So let's say you're a thyroid patient, you start taking Cytomel, you're feeling really good, um, but you're already self-conscious and struggling with hair loss. So once you start taking Cytomel, you notice that your hair loss worsens, but everything else gets better. So you have more energy, you're losing weight, your constipation is easing up, you're not as you're not in as much pain anymore, but you notice that your hair is falling out more. That's obviously a problem, and I have seen many people who, when this occurs, they simply stop taking the medication because any any increase in hair loss is unacceptable. That's a problem because you could have maintained all of those benefits that we just talked about, and your hair would have eventually have grown back because generally this is a temporary issue. Temporary in the sense that it may may last three to six months, you know, which again is is a is a hard 
which can be a problem for many of you here. But I think the majority resolve, you know, probably around months three to four. But I have seen it go all the way to six months. So if that happens to you, um, don't freak out. It may just go away on its own. Um, I do have some information. If you don't think it's going away up here, we're not going to talk about all that right now. So that's number one. Number two and number three are kind of um, somewhat related in that they're related to dose or how much you're taking. So number two would be you're taking too much Cytomel. So obviously because Cytomel is the most powerful thyroid medication available, um, it's possible that if you use too much, you can become hyperthyroid, uh, which may, you know, one of the symptoms of hyperthyroidism is hair loss. And so obviously if you take too much, you might become hyperthyroid, then you might lose hair. So that's sort of the that's sort of the way that works here. So it's it's pretty straightforward in that sense. But how do you know if you're taking too much? What I recommend is that you keep an eye on three really important tests if you're using Cytomel. Well, this is true of any thyroid medication really, but especially for Cytomel. And those tests include free T3, total T3, and TSH. Now you really don't want your your free T3 or total T3 to be elevated. You can get away with sometimes having your free T3 elevated and that doesn't guarantee that you're in a state of hyperthyroidism, but you really don't want your total T3 elevated as well. So you can get away with one without the other, but generally you don't want both of those together. Um, because if you do, you might start to experience accelerated bone turnover, which could lead to osteoporosis. You could also have some cardiac related issues, and then of course the hair loss itself. So obviously you never want to be hyperthyroid, meaning you're taking too much thyroid medication for these reasons, um, and they extend beyond hair loss. But just realize, if you're, you're taking it and you know, you're also feeling a little jittery, you're also feeling a little anxious, you're also having a little bit of palpitations or things like that, though that might be an early sign or an early indicator that you're just taking too much of the medicine and you need to back down. The good news is if you back, can back down your dose, improve your labs, then the hair should return to normal. Number three, and I would say this is probably the more common. So I said the Cytomel itself can cause hair loss, and I would say that that is common. It's not seen all the time, but I think people probably experience this number three, which is they're just simply not taking enough Cytomel, um, and they are probably thinking that it's the medication causing it when it really isn't. It probably has more to do with the dose. And remember, I said before that it is the most powerful thyroid medication, and doctors tend to they tend to fear it. I don't know if I would say they respect it, but they definitely tend to fear it. And what that means is they're most people who take it are commonly being underdosed. Um, and that just is because most doctors aren't comfortable or you know have the knowledge on how to dose it appropriately. Because, like I said, most, most doctors aren't ordering these tests, free T3, total T3, and TSH, which you should be ordering if you're taking this medication. So what commonly happens with people is that they, they, un, they've heard my stuff or they've heard other people's information regarding the benefits of T3. They want to try it, obviously. So they go to their doctor, they ask for it, and their doctor knows that it's going to drop the TSH because that's what all thyroid medications do. And T3 just happens to be the most robust medication at dropping the TSH. So they prepare for that by and compensate for it by dropping whatever medication you're currently taking. So let's say if you're taking 100 micrograms of T4, and you want to try T3, your doctor might agree, but in response, they might drop you 75 microgram, from 100 to 75 micrograms of T4 and add on another 5 to 10 micrograms of T3. So what, that happens, what happens then for a lot of people is that the amount that they dropped didn't make up for the amount that they added, and so really they're just in a worse state than they were previously. So they're really just maintaining a hypothyroid um, cellular environment, and you, you know, I know, that one of the symptoms associated with hypothyroidism is hair loss. But one of the ways you can determine whether this is happening to you or not um, and the, is that the hypothyroid state is also associated with other symptoms. So that could be things like fatigue, constipation, depression, weight gain, cold intolerance, and then of course the hair loss. So it is, it is somewhat easy to identify that that's the problem. Um, if that determine or if that ends up being the issue that's causing your hair loss while taking Cytomel, um, you know you you can manage that by increasing your dose of, of whichever medication you're taking. Um, you know that might might be Cytomel. It doesn't necessarily have to be, um, but it generally means that you need more thyroid hormone of some type, whatever it is that you're taking. And so basically that's what you do about it. So just make sure you're increasing your total dose of thyroid, you're monitoring your labs, um, and then if you want, you can use the resources I have here, which talk about how to optimize your labs if you're taking thyroid um, medications. And I'll talk about a number four as well, 
which is important, I think, especially for some of you here. And that is, this is unrelated to the to Cytomel itself, but re just realize that when you're experiencing hair loss, a lot of different things can cause it. If you also have hypothyroidism, then I think that, that your thyroid is a smoking gun, and that should be evaluated obviously first because that's the most likely thing that's causing your issue. However, there are plenty of other things including autoimmune disease, nutrient deficiencies, and hormone imbalances which can also contribute to hair loss which are independent of your of Cytomel which is the medication you're using and independent of thyroid status or function in your body. So in that way managing hair loss can be somewhat confusing for some people. Um, so just put this all into perspective. Just because you're experiencing hair loss and you're taking Cytomel does not guarantee that it's related to that medication itself. Now, it's likely that it is, but there could be some percentage of you, I would estimate anywhere between 5 to 10%, who are going to take Cytomel, experience hair loss, and it's not going to be related to the medication itself. Okay, so that's number four. Um, the, the final sort of word here is whether or not you should avoid Cytomel. And I don't think that that's the case. Um, I, I'm only providing this information because it doesn't exist anywhere else. I'm not providing it because it's a big problem that needs to be um, addressed and you know there's so many people who are searching for it. Um, on the contrary, I, I think that I'm just bringing you know, I'm just shedding light on this on this topic in general for those of it for those people who find it relevant. But I still think that Cytomel remains one of the best thyroid medications available. I think that most people who use it will not experience hair loss, and they will experience a benefit to all the other uh, conditions and symptoms that they are experiencing. So don't listen to this, and don't let it freak you out. If you, especially if you're not taking the medicine, don't let this be something that causes you pause or concern regarding the use of Cytomel. Obviously, you should weigh you know, the pros and cons before you use any type of medication. But I will say there's a number of people out there that I can tell, and I've never lost my hair, so I can't speak to this personally, um, but I can tell that one of the biggest complaints that they have is related to their the status of their hair. And so there are some of you out there that for, you know, for personal reasons or otherwise, you cannot tolerate any increase in loss of hair. And I, I respect that. And if you fit into that category, then maybe it's not a good idea to try it because that might cause, you know, other issues which would then lead you you know to feel more depressed about your situation and so on so there might be some of you um, if you're reading if you're listening to this or reading it and you fit into that category maybe it's not a good idea for you to try but for the majority and I'm talking 98 percent plus of people um, who have thyroid disease it should be you know okay to use and you should not experience um, long-lasting or, or long-term symptoms related to your hair so that's that's it, this in a nutshell. Um, remember, it's sort of this this video is you know more or less directed at those people who are already using Cytomel. Um, um, it's more of a specific topic in that way, and I know it's a little bit confusing. Hopefully, this sheds light on this um, topic. But if you have any questions, as usual, leave them in the comments below, and I will do my best to get back to those um, as soon as I can. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.